Hi guys, welcome back to Conversion Conversations. This is a bit of a late night video for me, uh, but I wanted to make sure I got this guy done before tomorrow. Um, we are looking at Transformers Beast Wars Masterpiece uh, MP32 Optimus Primal. And he looks amazing. I did an unboxing video a while back. The next four weeks are me going through the Beast Wars Masterpiece figures that I, I've picked up, and I'm really blown away by these guys. Uh, looking at him, I mean, this guy looks like he walked off my TV screen, the way I remember the, the character model from the 90s. I'm loving that uh, gorilla face. That looks amazing. There's, like, wrinkle details on his eyes. This paint application just looks awesome. They got, like, he's smooth because, you know, the CGI model, the fur was like a matte. It, it was like a, a, a texture they applied onto the gorilla model body. And that texture was, you know, the best they could do in the 90s at the time. So he just, like, he hits all my nostalgia points. He just looks awesome. I love the way this blue looks on his chest. He's just great. And uh, as a gorilla, he's pretty poseable. He can he can look up pretty far. Uh, you know, you get a little flap that moves out of the way if you want to get you know some real good uh, neck motion there. His arms go full 360. They go out. He's got big elbow bends, and it breaks the sculpt up a little bit, but I don't think that's a big deal. Um, the legs they go out again 90, no problem. They go back pretty far. They can go forward pretty far. They got to kick out to get around his gut, but he's a gorilla, so I don't mind that so much. The toes have a little bit of posability. Same with the heel. You can kind of get that where you want it for uh, his poses. And yeah, he can do kind of that standard gorilla four-legged look without any real trouble. He can also, you know, do the chest beating. Um, actually, due to transformation, you kind of get like some back and forth on his butt if you want to get like his arms his hands out you know like he's making his chest all big he wants to be menacing or you can also uh this is one thing i like Th these joints in his shoulders are locked in due to transformation but you can pull it out and get a little bit more posability in that shoulder joint to get his arms really you know you want him looking stern and mad at something Cheetor did, you can do that absolutely. Uh, yeah, the gorilla mode just looks awesome. They knock this one out of the park easy. Um, in addition to all his posability, he does have one other feature in gorilla mode. Let me lock those back. Put his hands on his hips. So uh, this face, you can pull right off. It's super easy to pull off, no problem. It's got two ports in his head and he comes with alternate gorilla faces. So this is the kind of the stern one we've seen before. We've got a happy gorilla and we've got an angry gorilla face. And I really like, I mean, these guys, Takara really blows me away with their paintwork on those faces, what they do to pick out the gums and the teeth. It all looks great. And again, there's two ports in the back. You slot it right in. Oh, I forgot to mention his his fingers are posable. I totally forgot that. But yeah, so you can get, you know, a happy gorilla wave, no problem. You could also... Now this one, uh, so I want to I wanna point out a molded difference here. So you can see on the angry gorilla face, there's this bar here. I'm not sure why that's there. But as a result, um, this back, the bottom port sits out a little further. And I found that this is about as close as I can get the face into the head sculpt. Whereas, you know, the other ones sit a lot nicer. I'm not sure why that is the way it is, um, but it's not a huge deal for me. The, the red's there. Maybe it's to make it look like his, you know, if his face is all scrunched up, they want it to stick out a little further from his head. But, you know, you can have him being an angry, angry gorilla, no problem. Uh, and his ankle actually normally is strong enough to... There it is. 
So you can, yeah, you know, you can have him do all sorts of poses. And uh, the if you notice, the only articulation I didn't talk about is gorilla knees. There's no knees on this guy. Um, it's an unfortunate result of the transformation, but uh, looking at the way they got his leg to fold up and what they can do with it, um, I really don't see how they could have fit a knee joint in there. It would have required compromising two different hinges on both sides of that knee. Um, I, I, I think this was the proper design decision. I think they probably tried a prototype or design with knees and they realized that to keep this stable as it hinges closed, it's a three-way hinge here, um, they needed to lock up that joint uh, pretty tightly and that required sacrificing the knee joint. But other than that, I mean, this is just a terrific looking gorilla. And Optimus Primal looks fantastic. I did want to point out, um, I'm not going to compare them to the Masterpiece figures I have right now because I figure I'll just do that as I review each one. But at the time that this came out originally, we had some recent Generations and Classics Beast Wars figures, which people originally thought, okay, we'll get Optimus Primal, but then we probably won't get any other characters. And they try to make a, a pseudo kind of Generations masterpiece lineup work. And if we're looking here, this to me doesn't work that well. They have very different aesthetics. Rhinox, Cheetor, and Rat Trap I like in their own ways, um, but they're to me they're much more realistic in their animal modes. Cheetor especially makes a lot of robot mode sacrifices to get that really sleek cheetah silhouette. The masterpiece line I feel like is all about animation accuracy right now. So uh, I'm really glad that we've gotten a new Cheetor, and I'm hoping we get a new Rhinox and a new Rat Trap uh, down the road. So we can have, you know, animation accuracy for the whole Maximal team and eventually hopefully for the whole Predacon team. So now that we've looked at his beast mode, let's go ahead and get him transformed. And for a masterpiece, I'm, I mean, I'm impressed by masterpiece transformations, but I am in particular impressed by what they've done here. So to start out, uh, I like to start out with the legs. First, we'll just get his arms kind of T-posed and out of the way. And we'll start on the legs by flipping out his heel here. Flip that out back. Take his gorilla toes, flip those in. And there's this piece that kind of was the front of the ankle. As those flip in, we'll straighten that out. And that's kind of a robot foot. Same thing on the other side. Flip that, no problem. Now we're gonna come in and on his Gorilla thighs, we're gonna fold those down. It's on a hinge. You can just pull this part out and away. Oh, there it is. Pull it out, there's a, a locking tab down here. We're gonna pull this out, and then now that it's out, we're gonna fold it 90 degrees and, oh, yeah, flip it after it's folded 90 degrees, and you can see these two shapes. This collapses back to form a really nice solid uh, lower leg piece. Same thing on the other side. Flip this out, fold it in, flip 90 degrees, collapse back in. I really, really like that part of the transformation. Then for the rest of his leg, we wanna pull, you can kinda of see that Z hinge, the two hinges here. We wanna pull in and down on uh, the lower leg, separating it out like that. And once it's out of the way, we can flip out the top of his kneecap and fold the leg down around it. Same thing on the other side. Fold this in and out, fold this down. It's important to do this uh, while this uh, lower piece is up and away to get the clearance to move that kneecap. Otherwise, if it's down like this, you're not gonna, it's gonna collide into the internal mechanism that locks it up here. Close that down. And the last thing to do on his legs is going to be to take this front part of his shin, fold that up, and it'll tab in nicely, locking his legs into a really, really lovely looking Optimus Primal leg. Like, I am impressed they got the overall shape of the leg to transform as much as they did. That looks impressive. Next, we'll start up on the torso. Uh, again, the... Uh, shoulder joints are part of a transformation, so we want to bend those in. It gives a really nice pop. I like that a lot. 
Now that those are in, we're gonna come back to his back. There are two sections on the sides here. Kind of got your get your fingernail in and pry those out. And once those are out, you get his butt flap up out of the way, and you can kind of, with the arms disconnected, they're not locking this back piece in along with these flaps. Now we can take this back piece and lift it up and out of the way, separate it out like that. Uh, actually, you know, while we're doing this, let me go ahead and I totally forgot to put his regular face on. I don't think it matters. I just like to have that neutral face in there. Okay, so now that we've got this back section up and out of the way, we're gonna come into his front section and we're gonna separate his abdomen from his chest. There's a tab in there that attaches his uh, abdomen to his chest. Pull that out. And with that out of the way, we can pull Oh, uh, what am I missing? Um, oh, never mind. It's just the chest can flip down. So we can uh, flip down his gorilla head into his uh, robot head like that, no problem. Get his chest out of the way. Oh, I see what I did. Okay, so to catch that on camera, there's a little hook down on his abdomen. You don't wanna pull this out 90 degrees. You wanna kind of lift it out and away, and then it gets you the rotation that you need. So with his chest, or with his abdomen out of the way, you can take his chest piece and kind of collapse it down into his chest cavity for his robot mode, because he doesn't have that part of his chest uh, in robot mode. And then you'll see there are two tabs on the platform on his neck. We're gonna take his abdomen, that becomes his new chest, and it's got two slots up here. Just connect those up. There we go, like so, and you get that nice click. Now that that part is done, um, we can come in on his shoulders, kind of lift up these shoulder flaps, get those out of the way, turn his hands to get the hands rotated where you want them to be. On his back, keep uh, those side flaps that we move it out of the way, keep those out of the way, and take his backpack and turn this piece around. It's on a swivel hinge, flip it around 180 degrees, and it has, let me get these guns out of the way, it's got these tabs here that fit into, uh, that's hard to see. There are slots here that when you collapse this back up, that tab and that slot will meet together and form a real nice seal. There we go, locking his backpack into place and flip his waist 180, collapse that butt and we almost have Optimus Primal all done. The very last thing is to get the front of his chest done. So uh, we simply pull, oh, we pull from underneath, start pulling the chest out and then come up top and it actually extends on a scope. Then once it's out all the way, you can turn it 180, collapse it back. There we go, collapse everything back. And now we've got a really, really terrific looking Optimus Primal. And yeah, I mean, Optimus Primal, like again, it's like he walked off the TV screen. It just looks awesome. I really, really love that head sculpt. You can see I've got a minor paint chip uh, on his face mask. It's unfortunate. I think I can try and fix that. I'll take a shot at it. Um, but he looks just terrific. The backpack is pretty clean. I've got some quality control issues, I guess some minor ones with uh, the, the toy, but it seems like I'm in the minority. Most people uh, aren't experiencing the same problems that I have. Um, so I'll just go through those, but it's it doesn't hamper my overall recommendation. So uh, real quick, in terms of features, his head swivels perfectly. Um, he does have, and I, I'm not gonna take advantage of this feature, he does have uh, LEDs, uh, lights in his head, that the battery actually goes in the monkey head, which if you saw earlier, I could kind of remove the monkey head. Um, you can put the batteries in there. I, I don't use them. I think they're like LR44s. 
I'm not going to use that feature, but if you wanted it, these eyes light up perfectly well. Um, he gets plenty of tilt. He's got kind of a bit of waggle in his, uh, I don't know what you call those, ear pieces. His shoulders, again, have the same range of motion that they used to. Um, not a problem there. Same thing with the transformation. These lock back up, but you get, you know, to use that um, transformation joint to get him a little more uh, articulation, which is wonderful. The elbows, again, plenty of motion there. The wrists articulate right there. Fingers are the same as they were before. Uh, the knees, now we do have knees, so you know, you get that dramatic knee bend, which is terrific. And I love this. I mean, the little, like, um, the way the, the ankle articulates and you have that connecting piece, that piston that moves in and out of his shin, that just looks awesome. That's a really cool bit of robot detail that I really, really love. And yeah, he is super poseable. He's up for all sorts of action. Um, you know, you can balance him without much difficulty. No problem. And he comes with some accessories. So in terms of his play pattern features, so I talked about the eyes. Uh, the other part of this is on his uh, wrist, wrists and the forearms, the inside of his forearm. If you push in on this piece here, this lifts a panel that can come out and give you his famous uh, wrist blasters that extend. So you've got that action on both wrists. No problem. Pull that out. So you can get, have them all gung-ho. Same thing with his jetpack, his backpack. The guns can flip out. So, you know, he can do that. He does have, this is my first QC issue, um, this jetpack, this panel here that we didn't really use for transformation, it should be able to flip out. So I can flip mine this way. And if I get his butt out of the way, if I show the camera this way, you can see there's some vents here. This is supposed to be his built-in jetpack. If I try and flip mine the other way, and believe me, I've, I've sat here and I've, I've tried my best to get this to flip out the way that it should. And I'm really, like, I'm, that's at the point where I'm not willing to use any more force because I don't want to snap this guy in half. Um, this should, and on other toys I've seen it, flip out the other way and form his jetpack vents, which is a really cool accessory, especially um, with... He's got a little peg here to help him uh, put, be put into like flight stands and stuff. I really like that. And on the the, the vents themselves, there's a little pe a port to go into a flight stand. But obviously, on my copy, I can't use that. I got to figure out what I want to do. I might try and shave a little bit of plastic to see if I can get around. I'm not sure yet. Um, that's an unfortunate QC issue. Um, but other than that, I'm really happy with him. His other accessories that he comes with are his two swords from the show, and they look great, and they can fit right in to his hand. You kind of have to angle it around his fingers, but then they lock in. Same thing on the other side. Get it right in between. And there's a tab right in there to go into his hand. And yeah, he he looks like he's ready to kick some ass. And I really, really like that about him. It's just an awesome, awesome set piece. Just a great figure. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, his faceplate. I forgot about this. It's hard because I don't have the fingernails to do it. But if I can... Oh, it came out really easy. So you can pop out his robot face mask. And again, you can see kind of there's where the, the lights are. But for his robot head, we do have alternate face masks. So this is his normal, kind of his mouth uh, face. We've got a full faceplate face. We've got kind of a, a, a funny smirking face. And we've got kind of a more serene face. And they just, you can interchange them no problem. Yeah, that that's a super easy face swap, super easy to do. I really, really like that. And yeah, that's Optimus Primal. Um, 
Uh, like I said, I'll do more comparisons to the other Beast Wars Masterpiece figures uh, in the coming weeks as I get the rest of them. But he he's just awesome. This is a, a toy that I never really had Optimus Primal from my, my childhood. Um, but I, I loved the show. I loved him as a character. And this, in terms of the show, is my, my favorite uh, version of that character. I, uh, I, I didn't totally love his Transmetal 2 look or his Transmetal 1 look for that matter. Um, this is when I think of Optimus Primal. This is the version I think of that season one Optimus Primal. And yeah, he's awesome. Easy, easy recommendation. I picked him up for like 110 bucks shipped off of like Amazon Japan or AmiAmi. Um, easy, easy thing to recommend. Just fantastic figure. And that's it for today. Uh, super good looking alt mode, super good looking robot mode, super fun transformation, small QC issue that seems to really have only affected my toy. Everyone else's seems fine. Um, so yeah, if you haven't had a chance to pick them up and you're curious about Beast Wars, Beast Wars Masterpiece is where it's at. And then next week, we'll take a look at the next Beast Wars Masterpiece figure. All right, guys, have a great day.